Welcome back. Remember that security analysis um, and valuation is an act much more than a science. But we do have done, um, or academics like, like us, have done a lot of work to try to decipher and tease out um, the intricacies of um, factors that affects a firm's valuation. So the results are useful. Um, and it helps us to understand the relationship between accounting numbers and um, market price. So in terms of capital market variables, we look at stock prices. We look at how stock price change around um, important events such as um, earnings announcement, um, how stock return change over, over time. Um, I have looked at um, stock price changes surrounding CEO turnover. Um, so all these are uh, things that have been studied by various researchers. Um, and the findings are very interesting. So let's take a look at um, what do this, what, uh, what questions are these researchers trying to answer? Very important, we, remember we keep referring to the idea that if the market is sufficient and in equilibrium, and we haven't really spent the time to define what it is. So what do we mean when we say a market is efficient? There's actually a formal hypothesis that uh, some academics has come up with. There is called the efficient market hypothesis. What this hypothesis um, stipulates is that when a market is efficient, stock prices should correctly incorporate all relevant information. And because of that, when new information arrives, stock prices should quickly adjust to the new level, the new correct level. And a natural question then follows is, what do we mean by all relevant information? So there are different types of information and some people classify the market sufficiency based on that. Um, a weak form efficient market suggest that stock prices only incorporated historic information. So things that happened in the past. So last year's earning or, or, um, or last year's stock price, last year's trading volume and so forth. A semi-strong for efficiency include all publicly available information. So um, of course, by the time they become public, you can say instantly it, is his, it becomes history. Um, and this is what we mean by this quick adjustment. So as soon as an announcement is made that it becomes public, then stock price will react quickly and correctly. A strong form of efficiency is say all relevant information, whether or not it has been publicly announced, is incorporated into the stock price. The question is, are stock market efficient? And the answer is, well, it really varied. So there's some study um, that showed that during after earnings announcement, market reaction to the news is highly efficient, but not completely. So what they find is that um, if the stock price is ongoing, so let's say the news is good news, then what that means is that as the stock price receives the news, it will go up. Now, if the market is efficient, the price should adjust instantly correctly. But what they find is that the price will adjust, but it takes some time for it to reach its new level. So it's highly efficient, but not completely. Next, we have another set of researchers that showed that the market is highly efficient, both in anticipating and reacting to quarterly earnings surprise. So surprise here is defined as earnings that differ from the consensus analyst forecast. So they, they find that prior to earnings announcements, there's some pre-reaction. And then as soon as the earning is announced and it's a surprise, it completely adjusts to the new level. What this Two studies show us is that if you're an analyst, 
and you uh, can react right away to your earnings announcement. Then they have potential to capture some of the post announcement drift. So remember the earnings supposed to adjust instantly, but because the market is only highly efficient, but not completely efficient, there is a period of time when it may be, um, there may be um, abnormal earning to be earned, abnormal return to be earned. But you have to be careful because occasionally the market also overreacts. Overreact means that the price will be higher than what the new earnings dictates, and then you'll eventually go back down. Since um, surprises were not completely anticipated, if you, you, your personal forecast is better than the consensus, you can also capture abnormal return by beating the consensus forecast. The bitly, this is very difficult to do, but that's really the bottom line of being a good analyst. A good analyst uh, means that you have deeper understanding of the industry, you have deeper understanding of management than the consensus. Um, so the bottom line is that insightful financial statement anal uh, analysis can potentially earn better than average return. This is true for um, on average, but this is a daytime job. So if you only if you can only devote the weekend or evenings to doing financial statement analysis, as you have seen in this course, is a very extensive task. So it absolutely is a full time job. An analyst will earn better than average return, um, and therefore they are they are earning their management fee. So for the overall investor, this is a, um, they are no better off um, or they are just as well off um, going with a, um, a reliable and competent financial analyst. So what do we, what can we draw as the final conclusion of all the valuation model that we have studied? How can we, can we use them to identify overvalue or undervalue stock? Empirical evidence that we have studied show that it vary. Um, the key finding overall is that the success rate decrease over time. So what that means is, if a model become very popular, very successful, then more analysts will use that particular model. And if all the analysts are using the same model, then they are competing against each other and the market becomes more efficient. So if you have a model that can identify market inefficiency, but everybody now use the new model, then the market price will react to analysts using this new popular model and becomes more efficient. What that means is the search for models to identify undervalue or overvalue stocks is an ongoing process. So the models that we have created here, remember it's important to understand the principle. Um, as an analyst, you will be constantly changing, modifying, tricking to make your model better than the next analyst. Um, currently, some new models use very advanced tools such as machine learning. Um, sometimes they are called the quant, quantum, uh, the quant models. Um, so we would expect to see new models being developed um, on a constant basis. Um, and ideally, that will make the stock market more and more efficient. And that will make that they will make resource allocation also more efficient and that is the overall goal, uh, that would be for the good of the society and the economy as a whole. You have now mastered the very important fundamentals of financial statement analysis and also valuation. I wish you a adventurous and exciting journey in continuing developing and changing your own model in the future.